welcome. Welcome to another episode during the COVID-19 lockdown period. We've got um, Lou Dimini here with us and he's a, a labor lawyer, he's a consultant and we've actually gotten to know him, unfortunately. <laughs> so he's one of those guys that you don't ever <laughs> want to call, <laughs> but sometimes you have to. And, and during this time, he's really been um, of great help to me. I've, I've called him a couple of times now for advice. Um, and today we will specifically talk about the labor law um, and how it applies and what our options are during this period. Um, I think as a, just to say where we are today, we, it's the 14th of April um, and everyone is starting to talk more and more about how are we going to manage the business side of this crisis. And when we start seeing that yeah. nothing is coming in from the top, how do you handle the fact that you have to still pay staff salaries? Um, so Louis is our expert. Um, Louis, do you want to quickly just give us a, a little bit of background, um, who you are and what you do? Well, my, as you said, my name is Louis and my surname is Dumini. So if I start talking, I can't stop because I'm a born preacher. But anyway, I'm a labor practitioner, a labor consultant for the past 24 years. I've been running my own business called IR Services Western Cape. And before that, I was working for Goldfield South Africa in the labor department for um, in, a, in a mine in Namibia for seven years uh, and then uh, became the human resources manager of the mine and then came back to Cape Town, started my own business. And before that, I was a teacher for five years for mathematics, science and biology. And that's where my love for training and teaching comes from. So that's why it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And I'm so pleased that I can help whoever needs uh, who he needs something to, uh, to know with regards to labor issues, management issues, or um, employer-employee relationship uh, issues. That's, that's, that's where my passion lies. And this is what I do for the past 24 years for my own company called IR Services Western Cape. Th thank you very that's much, me, Louis. In a nutshell. Thank you for that. And I also just want to add to that, that you have a lot of experience in dealing with dental practices specifically. Uh, I know that you have dealt with a lot of, yes, I mean, I've, I know you, you help all my friends. So uh, this is a small community. Um, so that, that is also why we see you as an expert in this field um, and, and we very, really value your inputs. Uh, Jean, do you want to maybe just um, give us some insight into the different aspects that we'll chat about today? Okay, so so I think just to to get some direction as to what we want to look at specifically, I think it's important that we break break this period down into two phases. The first would be uh, the current lockdown phase. So what what are options? What it is that we need to do uh, during the next what remains three weeks. Uh, and, and well, how we can manage our staffing and everything around that. But more importantly for me is uh, what happens after lockdown. So what happens from May, June, July, August, when we all go back to work and we need to try and start generating incomes. Um, but there's a tickle and there's, a, there's, there's some debt that we need to settle in the background. How do we deal with our staff? How do we, how do we approach that situation? How do we, how do we take staff into this, this reassessment of our business um, during the recovery phase, if you want to call it that. Perfect. Wow. Louis, can, can you maybe give us um, the options that we have available at the moment uh, as an employer? What are our options during the lockdown when we deal with staff? All right. Um, I I, I, first of all, just I, I'm not a labor lawyer, so I'm just a labor consultant. I'm an ex-teacher, as I introduced myself, so that you can just be. I uh, just want to make sure that what I'm going to say here uh, is not a legal, a legal opinion. It's through my experiences that I'm talking, and this is what uh, uh, what I would like to, uh, the advice that I give to to be seen as. All right, um, but. Um, the current option, the current situation, as we all know, is that the, 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 the lockdown has been extended by another two weeks. So the same situation is going to face employers during the forth, forthcoming two weeks. And if it's only going to remain at two weeks, we will still see. Um, another thing that I would like, just before I even give the advice, is that I, I cannot give advice on, based on my emotions. 
What I'm going to do here is to give you what the law says that you're allowed to do. And then if there's anything else that you would like to add to that, that is your option. I, uh, and that, uh, I have received many calls where people have, or employers have made decisions in how they're gonna deal with the situation until now where the circumstances have changed and now all of a sudden it's, it's becoming a, a, a situation for them to deal with. Um, the options as we, as we go forward from here, for, as an, from an employer's perspective, is number one is what about payment? What about paying the employees? If you have paid your employees up to now, you've got an option to either continue paying them, which everybody would love, but if that is, if that is not an option for the employer at the moment, there's an option of a temporary layoff, a layoff without pay. Um, maybe I can go to the beginning of this lockdown period so that people can just better understand what effect this has on the employment relationship. Um, so that uh, I think we need to understand the bigger picture and then we can go into the detail. The bigger picture is, what is happening in South Africa at the moment has got nothing to do with the cause of it by an employer or an employee. We can see this. We can see this as a temporary suspension of the employment relationship. The employee cannot provide a service and the employer is not able to provide the employee with work. I'm not talking about essential services, I'm talking about in general. So therefore, the employment relationship is based on me providing you with a, with, with a service and you remunerating me for that service or I provide you with my time and you remunerate me for, for the time that, that I'm spending at, you, at your premises as an employer. But that now has all changed during this lockdown because I can, I'm not allowed to buy by law to go to your go to the employer's premises as an employee and as an employer I cannot go to my own premises at this stage because I'm not allowed to I'm, I'm not an essential servicer you know, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to do that so this is a government decision which I think the majority of us all agree with however the circumstance is is that the employment relationship cannot continue as normal so, in general, a person can see this as a suspension of the employment relationship. So, right from the beginning of this, of this lockdown, employers would have been entitled to temporarily lay off, lay, lay their employees off for a temporary period until such time as the lockdown has ended. Uh, that would have been on last week Thursday, but now, oh, oh, this coming week Thursday, sorry, and then uh, now it's been extended, so that period of time is extending uh, until such time as the lockdown is lifted. So a temporary layoff is not a dismissal. It's not suspension with pay pending an outcome of a disciplinary hearing. It is a suspension of the entire employment relationship. Therefore, the employee cannot fulfill his obligation in terms of the employment contract and neither can, is the employer obliged to fulfill his obligation in terms of the employment contract. So that is the, the harsh reality of where we are today. Yes. So my advice, my advice to employers would be to, if, if expectations were created at the start of this uh, lockdown for them to for employers that they would pay their employees. But now all of a sudden the circumstances have changed. I would advise my employees if I were an employer as soon as possible of the changes in the conditions, fulfill my obligation that I, that I made with them up, up to the 16th, which is Thursday, because uh, that is the time that you committed yourself to with these changes you implement different conditions related to payment because of the fact that the, that, that, that the picture has changed. And it's, it's, 
based on nobody contributing towards it. Perfect. Um, thank you for that thorough explanation, Louis. I'm just going to, um, what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing from you in summary is that one of the options that we have available to us is temporary layoff of, of employees. Another option yeah. would be to keep on paying people if you are able to do that. Um, that's that's obviously true. what we all wish for. That, but if that that's is, not a legal obligation. That's that not is, a legal obligation. That is not a legal obligation. You're right. That, so temporary, that is a gift, yes. Temporary layoff means that there's a suspension between the employee-employer relationship. You are not firing anyone. You are not retrenching people. This is a temporary measure that's just applicable during the lockdown where people will have a part of their um, salary. not Well, they will not get a part of their salary. So if we think of this, the current situation... Yes. For instance, this is an example that I'm going to give, and I think a lot of people might be in this situation. At the beginning mm. of the lockdown, we all thought that we will go back to work on the 17th. And we yes. all thought that we will be able to generate income at that point. Unfortunately, be, based on that, we were expecting to pay all our staff. Mm. Unfortunately, the situation changed. And based on the changes, we now have to act differently. And the, the way that we can approach this is in temporary layoff then. Uh, do I understand? That's one correct? of the options. That's correct. Okay. That's one of the options. There would is you, another option as well. Yes. What would that be? And that would be for employers, many of their employees have been working for them for quite a few years. And some of those employees may have accumulated leave the leave that they have built up over the years, which they have not taken during their time of employment. That always remains a liability for the employer. Should the employee be dismissed for any reason, that would be a financial obligation on the employer in order to pay that accumulated leave to the employee, irrespective of what reason that the employment terminates. Yes. So in order to work, work off some of that liability, that can also be an option for employers. And then there's a third option as well. And that, for that, uh, 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 any questions as far as that is concerned? I mean... Uh, um, no, I think that is, that is, that is, John, can you maybe give us your yeah. understanding of that? Uh, regarding, so, so, um, Leave due. So I just want to have clarity on the leave due. So you're saying that if an a, an employee has employee has been um, has got leave due, that you can allocate the leave according to for this period. Or you yes, can you can. Hang on. That's, ask that's, for that's, the leave to be allocated during this period. Yes, th that is accumulated leave. In other words, leave okay. before this current leave cycle started. Yes. All right. Now it's from the from the twenty first of March or whatever it might be. What whatever before the twenty first of March. Correct. I'm talking about uh, uh, Jean. I'm talking about the leave that the employee accumulated prior to his current leave cycle. Okay, that's accumulated leave. Uh, so in other words, the or year the before. Previous years. The previous years, he's worked for you for 15 years. He's only taken okay. 10 days leave. He's got 25 or uh, 65 days leave due to him. That is that yeah. that is now accumulating in a in a in a in a yeah. uh, uh, somewhere. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I get that. In yeah. the in the current leave cycle, in the current leave cycle, the uh, an employee accumulates leave at the rate of 1.4. Uh, 1.25 days per year, all right? Yeah. Uh, depending on how long month, they work. Yeah. But now, uh, per month, per month. Okay. Now, I'm want, many employers are asking me, can they, can they tell their employees to go on leave? Force them, in other words, to go on leave. And with regards to that, I would like to, I would like to give an answer because this is something which very commonly is being asked for me at the moment. And... Uh, 
In terms of the basic conditions of employment, act, now I don't want to get too, too technical with numbers and so forth, but this is an easy one to remember for the employers, and that is 2010. 2010 was the Soccer World Cup in South Africa. Yeah. Section 20, Section 20, subclause 10 reads as follows. And I'm wanting to read this to you because this is very, very important. This is, I'm, go, I'm going from the law now, annual leave must be taken. A, in accordance with an agreement between the employer and the employee. Okay. Or B, if there is no agreement in terms of, sub, of, of paragraph A, that's the one that I've just read now as an agreement, at a time determined by the employer in accordance with this section. So therefore, if you are really wanting to pay your employees and they have got built up leave somewhere, you can force them to take leave now and pay them okay. that leave. Depends on your cash flow, obviously, all these type of things needs to be taken into consideration. But what I'm saying to you is there are three options. The one is temporary layoff. The other one is to use accumulated leave prior to this current leave cycle of each individual employee, or either you can tell them they need to take leave now, irrespective of whether they like it or not. If there's no agreement, the ob you as an employer can send them on leave. Um, just, just in practical sense, um, say you accumulate one, 1 1.25 days per month, so it's, and they've been employed for uh, six months, that's nine days. Yes. So that only takes us through to through the first two weeks of lockdown. So yes. what happens to the other three weeks of lockdown? Then you, you just can go lay back to you've used your you, you've used your leave. Uh, I'm still going to yes. pay, but I now choose. But you just don't have leave for the rest of the year, or you then you temporary have... lay off. Correct. Correct. Now then, another aspect, another question that just comes to mind is: this agreement should have been done. Uh, if we were to take, say, nine days or ten days of leave, of, of uh, guaranteed leave or given leave, um, this should have been communicated uh, before lockdown commenced, I assume. Are you talking about the leave that should have been taken? Yeah, so say I, so we decided that everybody, say we go back now and we say, okay, well, we've had two weeks. Now all of a sudden it's been extended. Now we're in a position where we don't know what to do. And we said, yes. okay, let me allocate your leave that you were due for the first few days of the lockdown. And then, uh, so we don't have an issue with leave later on in the year. Mm. Uh, we allocate that leave now. And then we part pay or whatever the other choice you might yeah. have for the next. John, John, I would not go that way. I would go the way that I told the employees prior to the lockdown what is going to happen in the first two weeks or three weeks. Mm. I would keep to that promise or else you're opening a can of worms. Okay. In other words, whatever you've laid out is what you're going to be doing in your first yes. section and what you discuss with your staff that you have to, you have to stick to that. And only now, since the circumstances have changed, are you allowed to actually start re-looking at what you discussed? That which, you, you're quite correct. That, that, that which you have come to an agreement with your employees with prior to the lockdown, from that Tuesday to the Thursday when the lockdown was announced on the Tuesday and the mm -hmm. Thursday things were closed, what you said to your employees, my advice would be that you keep to those obligations because of the fact that it's basically an agreement, a tacit agreement that you have reached with your employees. But now that it's changed, different circumstances should can now apply. And those circumstances are the three options that I've mentioned to you. So if you agree with your employees to deduct their leave and to send them on leave at the beginning of the, of the lockdown, prior to the lockdown starting, that is what you keep on doing until the 17th. Or the 16th. Okay. From the 17th, you ca you carry on doing something different because the circumstances have changed. And then communicating that decision with your staff. Um, I would have advised. Obviously, yes, you need to inform them of that. 
Absolutely, yes. Or else there's an expectation that the circumstances related to what has happened in the first part of the lockdown is just going to continue. And you are opening another can of worms when they return to work after the lockdown. So therefore, communicate with your employees in any ways possible. SMSs, WhatsApps, please make sure that your employees are aware of what is going to happen in the next two weeks. So I think that's a, very, very sure that's a very important point that you make. Sure, making. Sorry about that. Uh, mm. Please make, make sure that you also stipulate in what you communicate with them that they that these these terms and conditions will only apply up to two weeks from today, up to the 30th of April. Not beyond that. Yeah. Because that can also change. We don't know. No, that's um, true. You have, yeah, your employees has to know exactly where you stand with them because they are going to keep you to that. And that right. is something which fairness comes in. Fairness is, right. is coming in. If you're wanting to pay your employees right up to whenever the president decides to, to, to have this lockdown, you're more than welcome to do that. And that would be wonderful. But okay. that's, that's your choice. Um, just another another point that I want to quickly touch on, Louis, and um, something that you and I have spoken about is something called short time. Does that fall into the category of, of a temporary layoff when you are, are maybe reducing working hours? Can you maybe just give us a more detail on that? Uh, during the lockdown? Yes, uh, during the short lockdown. Time, short time would be a bit difficult because unless you're an emergency worker all right because then like the, okay. the retail shops and all these people but if you're an emergency situation and there's lesser work coming in then you can require your employees to work shorter hours yes, uh, yes. and then they only get remunerated for those those shorter hours yes um, uh, but the norm is for short time you need to give them adv advise them at least 24 hours before that's the normal situation okay all right so the normal situation, if I know that I've got lesser appointments as a dentist, I've only got, let's take the dentist, the two, two emergencies tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and at 9 o'clock. And 10 o'clock it's finished, but the employee would normally have been there. Then you can tell the employee the day before about tomorrow is going to be short time because of the circumstances. There's no yes. other appointments. Yep. So therefore, the implementation of short time. Yeah. Okay, so that is, is very important for us because... Um, we are still seen as an essential service so we will be seeing patients but obviously in a reduced rate and maybe one or two days of the week so it's important that you then discuss with your key staff members or your core yes. staff members and you decide who will be on duty when and then they'll be paid pro rata okay. or they could pay per hour that they work or half day or whatever it might be you agree with them and that calculation yes. is then based upon their salary and a percentage hourly rate of their salary, I assume? <laughs> um, yes. Um, what, they are required, what, what they are entitled to is the remuneration for the times that you require them to be at work. Okay. I'm not saying while they're working. I'm saying let's say a patient does not turn up, but the, but the employee turns up. Then no, you need fair. to remunerate that employee for the time that the person is, that the employee is there and not based on how much work is being performed during that time. Yes. Yeah. And taking so into consideration traveling time and prepping time, cleaning times, those things also need to, we have to manage that very fairly. Please don't, don't, well, I'm saying something very dangerous now, but don't pay your employees for the time that they sit in the traffic. All right. The, the fact of the matter is they get paid from the time that they start providing you or, or presenting you with themselves to provide a service to you. How they get to work is their own problem. Okay. Uh, I think what Corne is just trying to say is that it is to be fair uh, and to, to understand that if you're going to be working three or four hours a day, that you calculate that into, into your um, discussion or within the payment scheme that you can yes. pay that staff member for being there. Yeah. Yes. Jean, what, maybe a little, little piece of advice that I can give, which works actually quite nicely. And that is 
if you require an employee, it works out in many other industries, if you require an employee to come and present a service to you for whatever reason, rather go out of the, that there's a minimum that you would pay them, irrespective of whether they're coming to work or not. Some okay. industries say four hours, a minimum. Four hours, minimum, that you will get if you are called out for that day. Okay. Whether they work okay. for five okay. minutes, doesn't matter. Four hours, because then you're covering all these other things that the employee may may have some cost implications to get to work and all these type of things. Yeah, that I think that feels that feels fair to say that. Yes. Yeah. If they go beyond four hours working, yeah. and then basically you pay them accordingly. Yeah. yeah. So, so just to summarize, we've spoken about temporary layoff as an option about the, the, the reduced working hours and how that would work. Um, and then the other two options yes. um, that we've also spoken about, I think that's, it's, it's quite important to, um, to know that this is not for everyone. So if you, if, you, if you have to look at this, you have to think without being too emotional. Um, I mean, yeah, you can't absolutely. really, you can't really just, you know, obviously we, this is a very um, emotional thing to go through, to speak to staff and to, to make these, these decisions, but we can't be too emotional. So unfortunately it would be very hard decisions to make. Um, can we may, maybe then also focus yes. on the, the options that we have after the lockdown? So what would, would be the options that we could okay. look, look at going forward? All right. Let's start off, uh, Corneille and John, with, with the with the ideal situation. Yeah. Okay. The ideal situation: all employees come back to work, everybody starts working, and every and the patients are rolling in. Okay. Because nobody went to the dentist during doctor. They couldn't. All right. Unless they had an emergency. Okay. Right. That's the ideal situation. Um. After the lockdown, there may be a reduction in the amount of appointments that come in as it starts building up for the next for the next two or three weeks. I'm now beyond. I'm now in May already. Okay, so I'm, I'm okay, my, yeah. my head is now in May. Okay, so there's a reduction in the amount of people that come in, and the and the receptionist is getting a whole bunch of phone calls, and things are happening, and and your 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 order or your 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 uh, appointment books are, are, are slowly but surely filling up, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into short time and all these type of things and retrenchments because the staff that are there are being occupied and they are providing a service into the benefit of, of the employer. Now, please, please understand me right. The employer is not the dentist. The employer is the practice. The dentist is only mm. the captain of the ship and not the whole, the whole practice. All right. Mm. Um, I always use the example, if, 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 if Sia Kulisi scores a try for the Springboks, even I'm sitting on, at home watching on TV also get five points. It's not only him getting the five points. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> right yes. you there. Um, due to time, I am actually yes. going to end today's meeting and we will follow up with the second meeting because there's a lot that mm. we still need to cover. So we still need to go in detail yeah, yes. into this, the topic that you're talking about now. So the rotational basis, plus we need to go into yes. detail of how retrenchment actually works. Um, I don't think we know enough about that to make, it, to make an informed yeah. decision. And we only have five minutes left on this meeting. Yes. So I'm going to end the meeting now. Right. Um, and then if it's okay with you, we can maybe do a second one. Um, so I That's think fine. that we, we, we definitely, we covered a, a lot of very, very crucial information. Thank you so much for being very concise and to the point with the way that you um, give the information to us. Um, and I, I definitely learned a lot today. And then we will continue right. the conversation. Thanks. Thanks, Lee. You're more than welcome. That's fine.